Welcome back to Paranormally Correct. I am your host, Sarah, as always. And today we're talking about the Moorhead Screaming Woman, the UFO case from Eastern Kentucky, right close to my hometown, actually, in a town that I lived in for quite a number of years. And this is a really spooky case that I haven't heard anybody else online talk about. So I'm excited to tell you guys about this. I think you'll like it. I think you'll find it pretty terrifying. And this one's also very hard to dispute because there were so many witnesses. Many of those witnesses were authorities. Well, sort of. We'll get to that. Before we get started, please take a moment and click the like button and click the subscribe button. And I would tell you to turn on the bell, but nobody gets notifications about my videos thanks to Susan. Yeah, you can turn on the bell if you want to. I don't think it'll do any good, but definitely subscribe and leave a comment. And in case you are unaware, I am now also over on TikTok because TikTok doesn't suppress me and they let me be my weird, creepy, paranormal self and I just post all kinds of weird stuff over there. Um, so definitely go to TikTok and follow Paranormally Correct because it's very fun. And once we get to a thousand subscribers on there, I plan to start doing live streams pretty often. So TikTok, go to the TikTok. Now it's time to talk about the Screaming Woman UFO case. It was Sunday, November 30th, 2003 in Moorhead, Kentucky. And ACTC psychology professor Dr. Virgil Davis and his two sons were on their way home when they spotted a UFO hovering above a field. The object was described as being oval-shaped with bright lights. Now, I don't know how high in the air the object was when they first spotted it. My assumption and just what I've always taken away from this story when I've heard it, because this was kind of like local folklore for a while, was that it was pretty low. But don't quote me on that because I'm not 100% positive, but I assume that it would have had to have been not really too far up in the sky, not like a plane or a helicopter, because they maybe wouldn't have noticed it if it was that high. But what's really important to note about this sighting is that once they did see it and they pulled over on the side of the road to kind of get a better look at it, they noticed that it was coming lower and lower, a little bit at a time in intervals. Now, I think that Dr. Davis was initially trying to rationalize the sighting, but after he did stop his car and him and his two sons got out to take a look at it, I think he realized pretty quickly that whatever this thing was, it was not a common object that could be explained away with logic. Dr. Davis has been quoted on record several times talking about this sighting and saying that he was really glad he had his two sons with him. And if you think about it, yeah, of course, the more witnesses you have at a time like this, the better. Davis and his two sons went back home to the Adams Lane area of Moorhead. When they got home, they went upstairs to see if they could still spot this object in the sky. And surprisingly, they were still able to see it once they got up to the second floor of the house. By this point, they said that it was really close and I assume really low to the ground. Some witness reports indicate that at some point this thing may have touched down on the ground. I think UFOs can hover. I don't think they actually land on the ground. I think it's kind of like in Fly to the Navigator. They just hover a few feet above the ground and then they release magic steps that come down so their passengers can go in and out. Um, that's my theory. Anyway, that's how I hope that it works. Whether or not it did touch down or magic steps, all of that, um, it went so low at one point that it kind of disappeared behind the foliage. Unbeknownst to Dr. Davis, other people were seeing this object at the same time. Other people in the same area uh, where he lived. Here's where it gets creepy. All of the lights on this object, which were white initially, started to change into an orange color. Dr. Davis described this part of the experience as being eerily quiet, which I find to be interesting. I've always found it very interesting how UFOs don't really make a noise or a sound of any kind. I think that's one of the most fascinating aspects of UFO sightings is that rarely does anyone ever experience sound. Now, a lot of people think that when the UFO got to its lowest point, they think that that's what triggered this change, but the lights started off white and then they shifted to orange 
and then they changed into like a really intense red color. Keep in mind, this happened in the fall. I mean, it was late at night. I think it was like between 9, 10, 11, something like that. Of course, it was very dark out. So this light was probably filling up the entire area. So you can imagine how creepy this scene must have been with this light just coming from this object. And it's maybe it's like blood red. Maybe it just looks like something out of fire in the sky. I don't know. Like, again, that's just how how I like to imagine it. But it gets creepier. <laughs> when the lights changed to red, all of the dogs in the neighborhood started barking. Virgil Davis actually went on record to say that everything went crazy. That's how he described it. Um, but one of those things in particular being like neighborhood animals. He even said that his own German Shepherd tried to break loose from his chain and that the other dogs in the neighborhood were just going completely wild. And in the next few minutes after this happened, the UFO took off like a rocket, or as Davis was quoted as saying, shot off like a dart. It did the famous UFO maneuver. But it gets creepier. <laughs> so this is where the screaming woman part comes in. After the UFO disappeared, Davis's two teenage sons went outside and I guess they were just kind of milling around in the yard seeing what they could see. And as soon as they got out there, they started hearing this woman screaming, oh God, help me, help me, oh my God. Now let's jump back to another witness and talk about what she saw because this is pretty interesting too. One of the other witnesses nearby whose property was kind of up against Virgil Davis's property. Um, and then there was like a field in between. Her name was Carolyn Jones. And she said she saw the whole thing as well. Apparently, Carolyn and her daughter were putting up Christmas decorations outside of the house. And she said that she saw an object, some kind of bright white light, bouncing around all over the sky. I think this may be part of the reason that they believe that the UFO touched the ground. Carolyn said that when she was watching it, she said they heard weird popping noises coming from this wooded area. And um, I guess a lot of people think that what this probably was, was the object landing in foliage and like breaking limbs and bushes and stuff like that. And keep in mind, this is kind of in between her property and Virgil Davis's properties. Carolyn said her daughter got really freaked out by this and I think she ended up going into the house, but Carolyn herself stayed out and kept an eye on things and she watched it for I assume quite some time and she said it was like something you would see in a movie. Then by the time she did go in her house, she said as soon as she walked in, her house phone started ringing off the hook and it turned out to be one of her friends asking if she had seen it. There was another phone call of somebody else who saw it to check and see if they were okay because apparently like tons of people in the neighborhood were seeing this thing and they knew uh, approximately how close it was to her house. Now to jump back to Virgil Davis. Davis said that approximately 20 or so minutes after the UFO took off, the police came knocking at his door. Turns out the police were going to everybody's doors asking if anybody had noticed any unusual activity, um, if anybody had heard the screaming, if they'd seen anything that evening, because they had gotten so many phone calls of a woman screaming, and I guess people call the cops on the UFO too. I don't, I'm not real clear about that part, but they probably did. Once the police got there and started asking questions, they went out into the woods with flashlights and they combed the area for, you know, several hours. And nobody ever found evidence of this woman, this physical person, but all of these people in this area heard her screaming. And in fact, some of the authorities, um, I think it was like the fire department and the, the ambulance, you know, the whole brigade that comes when they think there's an emergency, when they get phone calls about somebody in distress or something, saw the UFO as well. And as for the rest of them, they spent the next few hours walking through the area with flashlights, trying to figure out who this woman was, why she was screaming, and what was going on in general. Nobody ever found her. The weirdest part about this story is that still to this day, nobody knows who the screaming woman was. Nobody in that area went missing. Nobody around there claimed to have been abducted or dropped off or attacked or anything like that. I know a lot of you are probably gonna be like, it was probably a bobcat or something. 
in all the years that I've heard about this story, because gossip travels really fast in Eastern Kentucky. Like we all know everybody's business, <laughs> but nobody ever said that this sounded like an animal. And trust me, if anybody in the world knows what bobcats, deer, rabbits, any type of wildlife sounds like when it's screaming, it would be Eastern Kentuckians. They would know they're all pretty much experts because we all live in the woods. We grow up in the woods. We grow up as one with the screaming animals. If they say that it was definitely a woman, I'll take their word for it. And that's the story of the Moorhead Screaming Woman UFO case. What do you guys think of this story? Have you ever heard this story before? Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did like it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe, okay? Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think about this. Let me know if you've ever heard it before or if you know of a UFO case similar to this one. Don't forget to come over and check out the TikTok. I'm gonna be posting a lot of paranormal stuff there because YouTube is just suppressing me to the point that I really can't even reach my own subscribers with my videos. And it's really unfortunate because I love making paranormal videos, but nobody ever sees them. It's a lot of work for nothing. <laughs> so I would really, really, truly appreciate it if you, you know, if you use TikTok, come over there and check it out. And if you're new here, definitely stick around. Okay guys, that's it for this video. So until next time, don't get eaten by dog man and don't get abducted by aliens. And I'll see you guys later.